my favorite word in the world and my call to action to all entrepreneurs, which is to be generous. You know, I have a, I have a wholehearted belief that everything that we want as entrepreneurs is on the other side of generosity. And to be very clear, I'm not talking about philanthropy and like just giving things away to other people, though that can be part of how you operate. I'm talking about how generous are you being with yourself and how you're showing up for yourself and cultivating your ability to lead. You know, how generous are you being with the people right at your home, you know, with your children, with your family? How generous are you being inside of your business with your employees, with your customers, uh, with your vision that you have for life, for your life, for your business? Um, I believe everything that you want in life is on the side of generosity. And so if you don't have what you want in life right now, then probably uh, the question I would ask you is where are you not showing up? Um, with the level of generosity that's required to create the reality that you actually want in life. Welcome to Spaghetti on the Wall, where we throw ideas, see what sticks, and nurture those that do. I'm your host, Armando LeDuc, an actor, entrepreneur, and coach, giving you insights that light up your world. We're here to explore the realms of business, marketing, and life, serving up a shot of inspiration with every episode. Ready to make ideas stick and grow them into something great? Let's dive in. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on when you are consuming this podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, Pedro Jerez is in the house. What's up, dude? What's up, man? You may be the first person who nailed my last name on the first go. Oh, really? Yeah, mm -hmm. they mostly they mostly say Jerez. So Jerez. That's the English version of that. <laughs> You're Dominican, right? I am. Yeah. Fool? Full, full on, as far as I know. And did you grow up in the United States or where'd you grow up? Yeah, I grew up in New York City um, in the Bronx, Boogie Down Bronx. Yeah, man. Um, across the street from a zoo. Nice. Bronx is <laughs> Bronx is tough, man. The Bronx is a tough neighborhood. You can't be. Mean, mean. Yeah, you got to be, you got to be like, you got to bring it if you're, if you're going to live in the Bronx. You can't just be like some dude yeah. just like walking around on, you know, I, I, I bet you the street smarts that you have created how successful you've become. Would you, would you agree? I would say the number one thing that growing up in the Bronx did for me is it taught me how to be resourceful, how to take very little resources and make a lot out of it, uh, to not make excuses out of your situation. Um, you know, where there's, there's a will where there's, there's a way, you know, there's a certain mindset, um, that you have when you grow up in the Bronx, if you want to make it out of the Bronx, you realize that if it's up to anybody, it's up to you. Um, and you don't complain about your situation. There's nothing, there's nothing positive that actually comes about complaining how little you have or how shitty your life is. Um, but there's one thing that I always had, you know, as I was growing up in the Bronx, I had a vision. And this vision for me started when I was literally five years old. Um, my dad decided to become an entrepreneur before I was born, uh, probably like a year or two before uh, when they had my sister. And uh, he joined the network marketing company. He doesn't speak a lick of English to this day, but he grew to be one of the top people inside of this network marketing company. And so I'm five. And this, you know, he was just early on in his career in this network marketing company. And it takes us to, um, the MGM Grand Casino in Las Vegas, of all places. And I find myself wearing my first suit. And me and my dad are matching classic men in black. And we're holding hands. And my, my sister is there as well. Um, and we're walking through the casino. And we see the grand prize that the casino is advertising. And it was a million dollars in cash in stacks of $10,000 in $20 bills. Um, and I had never seen that kind of money in my life growing up in the Bronx, but I always knew I was different. And I look at my dad at five years old and I see his eyes, like he's obviously excited. I'm excited. And I wouldn't believe the words that came out of my mouth, even at five growing up in the Bronx, I said, I'm going to be a millionaire, pa. And he just looked at me and he just smiled and he just kind of like squeezed me, you know, almost like that's my boy. And that moment bonded me and my dad forever, but, um, I had a vision, I had a vision. And, you know, if that, all I want to say with that is that it doesn't matter where you're from with a compelling enough vision, you get focused enough, you're able to get out of your own way, you're able to get resourceful enough. 
Uh, you stop complaining about your situation. You start taking ownership for your life. It's a lot of cool things that can happen. Heck yeah, man. I was, um, I was taken back by you and your business partner, Todd. And I was just like, man, you guys are just on another level in terms yeah. of what you guys are creating um, with this five day challenge, which I, I did when I, f when I got back, I, I, I just did a five day challenge, not, <laughs> not the way y'all do it. Right. But I, I just wanted to, one of the things that was said, and, and we met at this uh, mastermind called flight club, yeah. amazing mastermind, amazing, you know, marketing uh, people. And so one of the things that one of the guys said was sloppy execution is better than like amazing procrastination. Yeah. <clears throat> And I was like, you know what? Let me just roll in. Let me just do this five day challenge, put it together just so like I can see, you know, what it could be. Cause I've been doing webinars, but I, I had never done a five day challenge and who would show up and, and the whole nine. And it went like really well, like extremely well. <laughs> and I didn't even like nice. put any ads. Look at that. To it. Like yeah, I didn't put yeah. any ads to it. Congrats, man. It's like, thank you. So, you know, I just put it out there. I said, hey, I'm doing this five day challenge on how to monetize your podcast, you know, how to get invited to podcast the whole nine. And people were like, yeah, sign me up, sign me up, sign me up. And then they showed up to class and I had, you know, the workbooks and the whole nine. Um, and I just threw it, like, I just threw it together. Like, obviously I had all this information and I threw it together and it was like super, like just mind blowingly amazing, the value that I was able to give. But then people, you know, signed up to be clients and I was like, shit, this is, there's something to it. And so, um, so I was like, man, look, let me get Pedro on my have Todd on talk to talk about it too. But like, talk to me about how you guys came up with the idea or did you guys come up with the idea or you saw the idea and how are you guys perfecting it and taking it to, you know, that whole nother level? Yeah. So I was reading, I actually sent this to Mark this morning, which is a study, um, that was done by Mark Google. Todd, by the way. Yep. Um, I was looking at this study that was done by Google called the Seven Eleven Four, And this is a study that Google basically did based off all the market research that they have from people spending, selling billions of dollars, if not God knows how much cash through their advertising platforms. And basically what the, the, the research study says, it says Google research identify that be it on your website, social media, or in person, a buyer will spend seven hours on average researching your product, looking at reviews, comparing the competition and consuming content about your brand across 11 different touch points in four different locations before they're ready to make the all important decision to buy. And the reason I bring that up is that I think that's even more important. Um, when it comes to actually selling things that are a non impulse buy, you know, if we're talking about like buying a wallet or a sponge or, you know, things that you probably have lying around your household, you know, I say like what, what we do is probably, um, not the best model, uh, to follow. Um, but I think that if you sell something that, you know, where people actually have to exercise some logic and they have to be properly educated and they have to feel like they trust you before they actually buy the thing and engage in the thing. Um, then that's where basically this challenge model or this virtual event model, um, I think personally is the most lucrative model that anyone can follow. Um, so for me, this probably started, I mean, I've been, I've been in marketing now for what, 12, 12 years. Um, Mark has been in this game a lot longer than I have. Um, and I started off by doing webinars, um, because that's what I saw. Um, and that's what I knew. Uh, but I knew that it wasn't enough for a lot of people. Um, you know, some people just needed more time. They needed to be educated, you know, just an hour with you wasn't enough to actually build up the trust that, so that when you express to people how you can actually help them. Um, that they were actually ready to make a buying decision. And so I started doing challenges long before this thing became a mainstream thing. I didn't even call it challenges. I just called, I just called it uh, extended masterclasses is the way that I was um, framing it at the time. And I started this in 20, my first challenge I ever did was in 2018. So over six years ago. Um, and I was absolutely astonished at the results. Um, now, what I will say is that, you know, when something is a new concept inside of 
the marketplace, you know, usually what you see is you see really great results. But what happens over time is that once the market actually becomes educated and um, they see a bunch of challenges, they've gone through a bunch of challenges, you just almost have to be so much better um, to actually win at them. And I think that when I look at what's happening right now inside of the marketplace, um, I think because more people are following similar models in terms of building their companies, because they've seen that it's a very effective model to do so, the, the price of entry to actually succeed at the highest level, when I say succeed, I'm like, how can you do one event that's worth at least a minimum of a million dollars to you? Okay, if you're having a conversation with me, it's because you want an event to do at least a million dollars minimum. And then you want to repeat that again and again and again and again and again as a predictable strategy. Um, but to do that, um, you have to exercise a different level of generosity than just throwing up some landing pages and saying, hey, let's hang out for a couple of days and let me teach you some stuff. Yeah, for sure. So who are the people that you usually help? Who, who are people that are like, you know, a extremely good target market for you guys? Um, I mean, the, the, one, the ones that we've worked with the most are obviously um, people who are thought leaders, um, coaches, um, you know, people who sell courses, masterminds, um, you know, different things like that. Um, software companies as well. Um, if someone has an education company and has a software business, um, that combination of those two are absolutely amazing. Um, I would say like those are the, the primary ones, um, but this can work as well for a doctor. This can work for a lawyer. Um, Explain how this would work for an attorney. I, you know, I, we work with a bunch of attorneys, so I, I, if I can wrap, I, I can see it maybe for like estate planning attorneys and, you know, maybe divorce attorneys. Mm -hmm. uh, what about like personal injury or work, work, workers injury? Workers well, what's the, what's, the, what's the price point, for example, of someone in that field of what they're selling? What's I mean, it's all contingency contract? based, really. Like when it, personal injury attorneys don't get paid unless they get you money, right? So it's not really, I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't bring in a personal injury attorney or a, a worker's injury work, workman's mm -hmm. comp because the, mm -hmm. the, the people probably can't afford it. Or maybe they could, but it's just not one of those things that like you can maybe put out there. But maybe um, let, let's let's do an estate planning attorney. Let's mm -hmm. do that. Mm -hmm. So give me give me more or less the average contract. Three about three thousand, I would say, to do you know a will, estate planning, you know these one offs. Yeah, yeah, wonderful. Um, so let's just say that you built an event around that. Most people who are looking to do that stuff, like they're just not educated at all around. I've never done that personally, but the way I would think about it is number one, if I would do some market research, probably what some market research would tell me is that most people inside of that field are not really advertising really effectively. Right. And, you know, number one, like I just see that as a green pasture in terms of an opportunity to take over the market, you know, and, and, and do that really well. Um, you know, the, the biggest thing independent of what industry someone's in is I think the biggest piece that someone needs to figure out is how to actually position your idea so that when someone comes across it, they sit up and pay attention, right? Because anybody can run an event, anybody can register for an event, but that has no correlation to someone actually showing up for an event. So what happens all the time and why, um, uh, according to some people, events have stopped working when that, there's no, there's no truth to that. You know, it's just the way that people have are running their events have stopped working. Um, you know, they, they, they have some sort of a headline of like, Hey, we're going to teach you how to do this, blah, blah, blah. Um, and the problem with that is that those ideas are ideas that, you know, a lot of people are, are talking about, right? So you register for it. You're like, okay, I kind of want to learn this, but this is not something that I have to attend, right? There's nothing in there that is big enough that I think about this when I'm in the shower. I think about this when I'm taking, well, going to work, that I'm thinking about this when I'm waking up. There's nothing in there that is novel enough um, that I have to attend. It's just kind of like, it's a nice, it's a nice to have thing. Like if I go, I can learn some things, but it's not like life or death in some ways. Like if I don't go, 
And this is where I see that most people fail, right? Because they're just like, oh, I want to do a challenge. And they'll just come up with some messaging. And they'll throw it out there. And they think that this is the thing that's going to help them build this massive business. Or I'll give you a very practical example is I want you to imagine that you came across a headline that basically said the next Bitcoin. That's all it said, literally three words, the next Bitcoin. Immediately, what those three words do is they make you sit up, they make you pay attention. And what they say without actually saying it is it says you may have missed out on Bitcoin, but you don't have to miss out on this. And if you are if, if you were upset for whatever reason that you missed out on that opportunity or you cashed in on Bitcoin and you actually want to cash in on the next big thing, uh, you have to attend this thing. It doesn't matter if someone has whatever reminder sequence or whatever it is like the idea itself is so powerful that you have to go, you just have to be there, right? Right. And this is the hardest part in terms of actually figuring out. Um, and I think that most people's approach to how they approach this is wrong. So like, I'll give you how me and Mark think about this. You know, number one, before we write a single word, uh, we'll spend an extensive amount of time actually understanding the landscape of which we're operating in. But even, even after all of that, it'll kind of give us directionally where we want to go. But after we have an idea directionally where we want to go, we might come up with 30 different concepts and we might record 30 different videos and with different hooks, with different ideas, kind of really strong ideas that we think fit into the category of the next Bitcoin, regardless of what industry we're playing in. And we'll actually go out there and we'll run that content. We'll actually go out there and we'll spend some ads on these on these videos. And we'll our goal is like, can we make a video go viral before we ever build a campaign around it? So if we, if we lead with something like, Hey, you, you know, you may have missed out on the last Bitcoin, but there's this thing, blah, blah, blah. And that's the piece of content that actually goes viral versus like something that's just talking generally around cryptocurrency. The market is telling us how we should actually position something, um, versus any bias that we have of what we think our market wants to hear. It's almost approaching it as like if you were a scientist and your probability of success needed to be extremely high before that thing was bottled up into a pill and shipped. That's the way that you actually approach marketing that achieves seven multi seven figure or even eight figure results. Do you believe that the content itself has to be, I wouldn't say that great, you know what I mean? But like you could, you could bring people to a conference or bring people to a five day challenge with a subpar product, right? Yeah. Well, <clears throat> I wouldn't recommend it. I wouldn't want to work with right. that person personally. Um, however, uh, going back to what we were talking about, if the opportunity is right, uh, you can almost sell anything. Um, this, the number one thing in my opinion, the two most important things, um, if you have an opportunity that truly is a green pasture, um, based off, um, based off, uh, what's happening in the market. Like I'll just give you an example in real estate, right? Which is a, a place we've done a bunch of things at. um, like we have a client right now that's in commercial real estate and commercial real estate's in a really, really interesting place. Um, it's kind of like 2009 all over again. Um, but specifically in commercial real estate. Now, all sorts of people have battle scars all around um, uh, single family homes, whether that's wholesaling, flipping, short term rentals, they have their struggles with it, even if they're doing it, they see basically how it can be more lucrative. And commercial real estate just only because of the fact that it's not mainstream. And because so many people don't know about it. And because the market timing is just absolutely perfect. That alone, like even if everything we did was terrible, just if we got that message right, that alone would be an example of a terrible offer can lead to almost a, a killer, a killer situation in terms of results on the back end of that. Um, now, not every offer is is prime for that, but marketing is creativity. You know, if you if you get creative enough, you can find the spin, you can find the way how to position something. Um, and I think that most people that are marketing for their business are lazy. And so they're getting lazy results. Yeah. 
is it laziness or is it knowledge? Uh, I think it's a combination of both. Um, I, I think lack of long, lack of knowledge is laziness. You know, like, for example, I've just always have had a mindset of always wanting to learn. Right. Um, I'm, I'm always learning. I always want to be on the cutting edge. If you want to build something significant in life, then you just have to realize that you need to learn to learn. And the moment that you realize that you can learn and you realize how dangerous you actually can be um, and the value that you get to bring into your organization. And if you don't want to be that person, then you better surround yourself around people who have that mindset. Um, if you want to grow, you know, if like if you feel like you've achieved your lifestyle goals and your business, then great. You know, congratulations. I mean, you've done something absolutely admirable. Um, but um, yeah, I think learning and learn, I think is the ultimate superpower. So what are some of the problems that you're seeing with uh, thought leaders, software developers, uh, people that you're helping? What are some of their problems and pain points? Yeah, I, I think I think more than that, and I think this is a more general conversation. Like if people, I think in general, we're entering a season where a lot of businesses are going to struggle. Um, a lot of businesses are going to struggle. Um, I think that we're entering a season of, as it relates to the market and, and businesses, like, there's going to be a lot of darkness in my opinion, um, AKA some sort of recession, um, cash is going to become more tight in the marketplace. And here's what people don't realize. And this is probably one of the biggest mindset shifts that I can ever give someone good times or bad times. Some of the biggest companies in the world have been built in good times and they've also been built in bad times. And probably the, mo the more memorable companies that you love and admire have probably been built in bad times. Like I would encourage you to do a search, put on chat GPT, companies, iconic companies that came out of 2008, iconic companies that came out of the dot-com boom uh, crash. Um, and you'll be incredibly surprised at what you'll see. And so what I'm trying to say with this is that there's always people who are succeeding in bad times and there's always people succeeding in good times. The problem is that in a bull market, there's, there's certain biases in people's thinking that starts to form. You know, if, if you start to win in a bull market, you think that it's going to be that way forever. And what happens is that when you start to form that bias is, um, you become defensiveless and you realize then only when the market turns, how at risk you've been the whole time. And so what I see happening right now inside of the marketplace is exactly that. Um, I get a call or a message or an introduction sometimes daily. Um, if not, at least a couple times a week of someone who fits into that category. And you'll be surprised. Like these are, iconic people inside of their industry and what they do. Like they're the, the who's who's and they're experiencing the same exact thing. And so the first thing to acknowledge is like, yeah, there's always people succeeding in bad times. Um, and I think what's happened is that there's a lot of people who were able to succeed by being good um, in a COVID world. Um, you didn't have to be very good. Why? Because you had people's time um, they were locked up. And because of that, you also had people's attention. And here's the third piece that they had for the, the ultimate trifecta. They had capital, mm. right? There was so much money being pumped into the economy, like just manufactured money out of everywhere that basically created an insane amount of inflation, but there was cash. Banks were lending money and there was this huge stimulus essentially pumped into the economy. And so you have the ultimate trifecta to sell a lot of stuff. Now, what happens when those things get stripped away, when you no longer have people's time, when you no longer have people's attention freely given and capital is no longer there? Well, guess what? Now, all of a sudden, you can't be good. You can't even be great. You got to be freaking outstanding if you actually want to succeed. And that's not a game that some people want to play, <laughs> but here's what I'll say for those who actually want to play it. It's actually your biggest freaking opportunity. And so 
in general, no matter what you sell, if what you've done, if what you're doing has stopped working, I just want to tell you is that what you're doing has not stopped working. The way that you're doing it is what stopped working. Right. Um, and, and you just need to realize that you were operating in an environment that it was very easy to succeed in. And now, um, the game has changed. And so you got to change how you go about what you're doing, um, to continue to see results with your existing business strategy. Um, and that's the game of business. And that's why I think it's the most thrilling thing in the world. Um, and the most amazing thing in the world, um, cause it's just solving problems. Yeah. What happens if, uh, people don't pull the trigger now? I mean, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not a genie. I won't pretend to, to be a genie or anything like that. Um, you know, I think only someone can decide, you know, what kind of urgency they have ultimately about it. Um, and that, that, that's really it. You know, um, some people have more risk than others, you know, some people can afford to let things play out for a little bit longer. You know, some people have less overhead. Some people have more profit. Some people have more cash in the bank. Uh, but here's the best quote that I'll tell you um, by Warren Buffett. He says, it's only when the tide goes out, you actually see who's been swimming naked. And I, think, <laughs> I, think, I, I think we're going to find out who's been swimming naked. Uh, a, a thousand percent, man. What a, what a great quote. Um, Cause I see it all the time, especially with my clients and like people that are people that are early adopters, people that are staying cutting edge, people that are, you know, just taking action, doing and, and going, those are the people that are succeeding. You know, the people that are holding on and, and, and pensive and slow to take action. I mean, those are the people that are really going to start suffering here uh, within the next six months to a year, um, if not sooner. Um, but yeah, to your point, tell me some stories. I, I, I saw that uh, webinar that you guys did. Uh, loved hearing some of the stories of people that you guys have helped with your um, strategy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, <clears throat> very wide, wide range of people. Um, um, I, uh, my, my last kind of big company that I was working with, um, was a company inside of the real estate space, um, where I headed up all the marketing there, had a team of over 30 people who kind of reported to me directly. Um, and, um, we actually in about three years turned it into the largest, um, investment network of women, um, in the entire world. Um, wow. It was a company that literally in the beginning of 2020 was doing seven figures, if that, um, but mostly by doing in-person events and took it virtual um, and was able to grow to over $40 million within a three-year time period. Um, and that was using a challenge model. Um, but I will say, even going back to like what I said before, the way that those challenges are being ran look very different today than they did over the last three years. And that same strategy won't produce the same exact result. Just, just, just to break even, meaning like just to stay where that company is at. Like if you think you don't need to innovate just to stay where you're at, you're wrong. Um, just for that company to stay where they're at, um, looks radically, radically different today than what got them there. Yeah. Um, so that, I mean, that was a, pretty, pretty big one and amazing case study. Um, you know, Mark has a really cool case study that he did a challenge with his brother, um, um, that initially on the challenge off of $3,500 in ad spend, um, on the event did about 350,000, but when it was all said and done, the campaign brought in over $2 million. Um, when you took in the whole backend strategy that went into that, uh, because there was a live event included inside of, um, the way that that was all structured. Um, and so when it was all said and done, brought in over $2 million. Um, you know, what, what's, what's kind of unique about like the case studies that Mark has and what I have, um, is most of the case studies that Mark has are people who have no following, who don't have a podcast, uh, who don't have a social media following. Um, and how do you actually, and, and me as well, like, how do you actually take someone like that and make them the unicorn inside of their market? Um, you know, it would be something else if, if we said, Hey, here's all these success stories that we've built. And so far, I mean, it's been definitely over a dozen seven figure companies, multi seven figure companies, and probably close to a handful multi eight figure companies at this point. Um, 
but most of these guys, it would be something completely different if I said, oh, we did this for people who um, were already authorities in their field. I mean, those are the kind of people who are coming to us now. But the way we started was basically by helping people who were starting with zero, mm -hmm. um, if you will, um, do this. And I think that that's what makes it even more significant. Like, how do you actually approach building something when you don't have all the things stacked in your favor? Um, yeah. That's amazing, man. So what's the, so I know you have, guys have a few offers. What, what is the uh, offer that you guys are working on right now? Yeah, I think, I think the, the biggest one, um, we have a partnership where we actually partner with people to do this. Um, I will say that that offer is not for everybody. It's very expensive. Um, and also we already have a wait list for it. Um, so you can get on the wait list. You should be on there for a while. Um, and, uh, the, the other one is we have a mastermind, a coaching program such mastermind. And, um, I would say this is definitely something more accessible, um, to people. And I think what's really unique about it is that I think the way that a lot of people approach um, teaching things is that, you know, they'll, they'll just basically create a presentation and say, do this. You know, I think what's really unique is because we are in the game. We are doing this stuff every single day. Me and Mark are doing this for clients every single day, day in and day out. Um, we're not offloading the work to other people where we're in the game. Um, and so we're literally showing people behind the scenes. Imagine you can like sit over my shoulder while I'm on the computer and Mark's on there with me on zoom and we're actually doing this for people and right before your eyes, actually building, uh, an event that within less than a week is going to generate seven figures plus, um, and seeing how me and Mark are literally arguing and <laughs> like, just like, no, yes. And like literally the, the. And just being in that environment with us um, and then being able to actually replicate that and copy that and copy and paste that into your business. And then when you're coming up with things, because I think sometimes there's a gap in how things are perceived and, and, and then um, how things are taught and then how people perceive them. So I think the coaching aspect of things is also really important, um, which is someone will do that, watch that and then actually execute. And then they'll be able to report back and say, hey, here's what I did. Um, and then we're actually able to critique it and actually give them feedback um, to make sure that, again, approaching this like a scientist, that you have the highest probability of success when you actually go out there. Um, because as us entrepreneurs, we're all faced with limited time and limited money um, to some extent, right? And so how do we actually maximize that? So um, yeah, in our, in our mastermind and coaching, coaching program, that that's what we do. Um, there's a lot of things that are included in that, but what I will say is that the outcome of the program is that, um, someone launches a, a successful six, seven, even multi seven figure event. Um, and it's a mastermind and coaching program specifically dedicated to that with, um, some incredible people. It's amazing. Pedro, how do people find you guys? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so what's so funny is that me, me and Mark actually came together probably less as of the time of this recording, less, less than a month ago. Um, so we've been able to bring on all this business um, within that time period. Uh, we were both operating our individual businesses previous to this. Um, but at the moment, there, there literally isn't a website. Uh, you know, there, um, there isn't really somewhere that someone can go to find out more, you know, outside of talking to us directly. Um, but what I will say, if someone does want to get in touch, um, and get connected around this topic, um, they can go ahead and email me, um, at just Pedro at business with integrity.com so again, Pedro at business integrity.com. Um, and that's, uh, the best email for me right now. That's awesome, man. Uh, you guys are rock stars. I really do appreciate you coming on. I got Mark coming on, um, in a couple of weeks. So, you know, you guys definitely inspired me. <laughs> I was just like, like I said, I was like, oh, let me, let me get this. Let me just do one. Not, not on the marketing end of it. I just like wanted to do one. Right. To test like, it. To yeah, test yeah. it. To I see love what that, it, man. Yeah. I yeah, love that. To see like, okay, what, what is the, what, what would the curriculum be like, you know? And then you guys just opened up my eyes to like the whole community aspect, right? Like you bring in, you're, you're doing the five day challenge in order to create the community. And then from there, masterminds and the whole nine, right? Like, yeah, Here, here's what I'll say. I'll just kind of leave people with, with two things at the end of this podcast, which is 
I hope what people walk away with more than whether a challenge is right for them or a virtual event is, is, is right for them, you know, independent of that, I hope that people walk away with a mindset. You know, people ask me, Pedro, what's your ultimate superpower? I wouldn't say it's like how to run challenges. You know, yes, I'm really freaking dangerous at that. However, I would say my ultimate superpower is actually my mindset. My mindset that I have as it relates to solving problems, realizing that problems are in business, like seeing them like a chess master, right? If they're there, um, you know, they're, it's a natural, it's a natural part of the game, you know, expecting yeah. that they're not supposed to be there, um, I think is, 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 is the wrong mindset to have. And instead, you know, actually leaning forward, like, oh, I was waiting for you. I was expecting you. Um, and like, okay, now what do we do? So we live in this very unique environment right now um, where the game is changing. And the question is, how are you actually going to respond? Are you going to cave? Are you going to shrink? Are you going to get smaller? Or are you going to expand? And you're going to meet it head on. And you're going to find solutions um, to these problems so that you can come out of this even stronger, right? And I think that that's one thing in common that all great entrepreneurs who've been around for a really long time, they have. They have a certain mindset. They're hungry. They, they love the game. They love that the economy is about to change, right? Um, they absolutely love it. And, and they realize the opportunity that's actually in front of them. So if that's you, then I congratulate you. And if it's not, then I would just encourage you, if you're an entrepreneur, then um, you know maybe something to, to look at within yourself. And the last thing that I wanna leave people with is my, my favorite word in the world and my call to action to all entrepreneurs, which is to be generous. You know, I have a, I have a wholeheartedly belief that everything that we want as entrepreneurs is on the other side of generosity. And to be very clear, I'm not talking about philanthropy and like just giving things away to other people, though that can be part of how you operate. I'm talking about how generous are you being with yourself and how you're showing up for yourself and cultivating your ability to lead. You know, how generous are you being with the people right at your home, you know, with your children, with your family? How generous are you being inside of your business, with your employees, with your customers, uh, with your vision that you have for life, for your life, for your business? Um, I believe everything that you want in life is on the side of generosity. And so if you don't have what you want in life right now, then probably uh, the question I would ask you is where are you not showing up? Um, with the level of generosity that's required to create the reality that you actually want in life, right? Um, and as soon as you answer that question, whatever it is, just know that what you want lies in the generosity that you bring forth. And that's my call to action entrepreneurs. Be generous and go big. Heck yeah, man. Y'all, Pedro dropping knowledge bombs. I really appreciate it, man. I appreciate you being here. You guys reach out to him uh, and Mark because I know they've got some real, really big things cooking. We're going to be in touch for sure. And, um, you know, love what you guys are doing, and I'm glad you're here. Yeah, appreciate you, brother. All right. And that was Spaghetti on the Wall, ladies and gentlemen, brought to you by LaDuke Entertainment for all of your social media marketing needs, podcasting, all that. We got you. And uh, you can watch Spaghetti on the Wall anywhere. You're probably listening to it right now, so keep listening, and we'll see you all next time.